Okay, so uh, I've used all the fuel on you, so I'm going to move this fuel truck out of the way. Yeah. And you're going to carry on heading north, I think. Probably pretty much going the same way I'm going. Yeah. With my lumber truck. Well, I got unstuck, so that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it took only an hour. But if we take... You've got seven points there, I've got seven points there, and we only yeah. need to bring in nine, so we should, in theory, be able to finish all the lumber. Do we need to finish the garage as well to complete the map, or do we have to just do the lumber? No, we just have to do the lumber. We could finish, but I think the garage points are the easiest because we have both those E-class, but we'll see, I guess, once we have the... Yeah, I mean, I don't... I think, you know, we don't need the garage in order to carry on, I don't think. No. Oh boy. Water. Oh, I'm so happy. Wheels are spinning here. Crikey. <laughs> Let me know if you need a winch or anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, so far, so good. Are your lights on? Yeah. It's interesting because on my screen, your lights are not on. No, I know. That, that's something that I always wanted is that they synchronize a little bit more. I mean, I, I got used to the fact that the mud doesn't synchronize, but at least the lights would be nice. Yeah, I should be able to see your light. Can't be that hard for them to do. No, you would think not. Because it's like, it's either on or it's off, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not like mud, where it can be deformed in all kinds of ways. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm moving this fuel truck, but I don't think we're going to need the fuel from it. Although, it, we'll see. We'll see what your fuel level's like when we get up there. So far, so good. Yep. Slow and steady. Mm -hmm. Let's move it up a gear. Still all right back there? Yep. Yeah, I'm not even going to take her out of diff or all wheels until I'm back on dry land. I learned. How much fuel have you got at this point? Uh, 224. Out of what, 330? Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you want, like, I'm taking a right to the fuel station. If you want, just... If you hold there, I can come back and top you up. It's up to you. Uh, maybe not a bad idea. I'm burning at the moment at around 20 liters per... Well, yeah, around 20 liters per minute. Oh, it took me minutes. about two minutes to do a loop here and come back. I think they need to build something on top of this game, like um, like an economy or uh, something that between maps persists, because at the moment it's all very sandboxy. Mm -hmm. Play a map, you get your points be done, reconfigure, play a different map and so on. There's nothing that's tying it all together in any way. No, that is true. That would be a really greater nice objective. Okay, I'm at the fuel point. Oh. Look at the trailer sinking when I filled up it was hilarious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All the liquid goes in and the trailer goes... My <laughs> suspension goes down. Get one more way back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice if there was some kind of... greater good to work for, I don't know. I think it's pretty nice how they made that map though, how it, how it has this 
well, pseudo 3D almost. Just like, like the detail on the terrain is just fantastic. You know, mm. it just looks like you can't you can't see any like obvious tiling um, th that you often get with maps. You can see the different sectors. Like OMS is a classic for that. You can see the sectors. Yeah. Um, with this, it just feels like one fluid world. The detail on the vegetation is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Just little bits of it everywhere. Well, and, and I mean, for the scale of it all, I mean, yes, they are not super big, but they are not... Uh, the, the amount of trees and everything, and if you think about it, other games have the amount of trees and you would be done. Yeah. So there's a lot that they got right with this one, definitely. Absolutely. But there is... It, it, it's almost... It's, it's sad to see that there's so much untapped potential, though. I'm just glad the game is under development again yes yeah man let's speak of being a big mess initially there oh thank you you're welcome off i go hi ho hi ho okay i'm gonna flick over to my log truck Make sure you take the correct turn because you can't. You have to go left before that block post. Mhm. Mm yeah, I got I got waypoint set all the way. I I learned my lesson. <laughs> I don't I don't trust my sense of direction in this game at all. Oh, <clears throat> I wanted to ask you anyway, uh, since we had um, emergency games earlier uh, or talked about that. Um, have you seen this new, uh, what is it called, Build and Rescue? Build and Rescue. Mm -hmm. it's, I do believe uh, it's getting released today, Early Access. Build and Rescue, but I think I know which one you mean. Um, yes, I think I know which one. Is that the one that's on, on the trailer thing that shows you an oil rig and stuff? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have to build your own vehicles to go rescuing mm -hmm. or something like that mm -hmm. yeah i think i saw that the water physics look quite amazing from what i've seen have you seen the water physics in sea of thieves <laughs> oh in what the water in that oh sea of thieves. See, yes yes i watched somebody i don't know who i watched i never watched that person before that's why i can't remember the name but i've seen the stream and i was like oh my yeah, the water and that is just amazing. When, yeah, when the big roller comes and, and the, the ship just... Oh, yeah, ship, boat, ship, ship. I don't know. I'm not a sailor. But, yeah, it looks amazing. Looks quite fun to play, too. With the right it people. looks real fun to play with friends. Just get a crew together and um, go adventuring on the high seas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it already released or is that? It's in early access. Um, comes out in March, I think, some point. Oh yeah. I think if you want to play it, you have to buy into the early access. I think. No, oh, of course. What's your take on early access in general? I mean, you as well as I, when when we started with gaming and everything, there was no such thing as early access. There was. It would have been impossible. Because you would have had I think to. The, the, the original premise for early access is a sound idea. Um, it, 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 it brings together the, the ability for the developer to get a bit of money coming in because obviously they've had to bankroll the whole thing mm -hmm. all the way up to the point of release, which is expensive. And also they can get early feedback from the community about the direction of the game and they can get early testing. So in principle, it's all it's all a great idea. In practice, there's a whole load of companies that completely abuse the whole thing. Yeah. Um, Subnautica is a game that was done properly in early access. You know, they, they laid out what they were going to do. They took people's money. They built it, keep, kept regularly adding content, and then they've released the whole thing, and it's a great product. Mm -hmm. You know, if anybody could do early access, if everybody did early access like that, we'd all be very happy. Yeah. But then there's a whole lot of people that totally abuse the system. You know, they don't they don't deliver the game. It's in early access for like four or five years. 
Um, and then it's abandoned. Worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, it's abandoned, or you know, and your money's never given back. Um, I'm not making that mistake again. Go backwards. Um, but I don't think we should. I don't think we should let the bad apples tarnish the good ones. You know, mm -hmm. because that's just life in general, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I like early access as long as there's like a reasonable plan behind it that says, you know, we're in early access. We're looking to, you know, release by. April 2019 or whatever it is they've got this is what you're buying like because you don't at the end of the day it's your money you don't have to buy an early access game you can just completely wait to release like that's oh, your that's your option so if you do buy into it then and, and then you start giving the developer feedback and then you get shut down by people saying well it's early access you know mm -hmm. as if it's like a as if it's like a carte blanche right of passage to say well if it's early access we can do what we like you know and you can't criticize it which is ridiculous yeah no that's not how uh, <clears throat> but i feel I, be, I feel too on that one and that's actually that's something where i feel strongly about it's funny that you said that um it goes both ways though um if you give if you give uh, criticism constructive criticism is appreciated but just bashing a game for the sake of of being negative i don't know that doesn't have to be either it, it kind of goes both ways right it's 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 a give and take or between the developer and and you as essentially the beta tester at that point or alpha or whatever the case may be i was looking what was i looking at this afternoon i was looking at a game on steam um it wasn't it wasn't wildlands it was something um oh, i can't remember the name of it now and and i i read a comment a, quite a chunky comment from a guy who has 1200 hours in the game and it was a and he was giving it a down vote and this was on the back of a mostly positive review so mm -hmm. here was a guy with 1200 hours in a game and was giving it a down vote and he basically said he said let me say this straight he said i love the game and this was an early access game he said i love this game i've got 1200 hours in it mm -hmm. he said but the developers when you suggest anything they shut you down and they don't want to listen and the community is super toxic and will jump on you to say it's an early access game you can't you know you, they can do what they like basically yeah and he said for that reason i'm i'm done like i'm out and that's why i'm giving <clears> you a negative game. you need to understand that you're getting the game mm -hmm. which you can't really give feedback to even though it's early access because the developer doesn't want to listen and the community is so toxic that they won't let you which I thought was very interesting. Okay, I've just learnt an important lesson. It took if all of the If you bring seven points worth of stuff to a lumber mill that only needs one point, it will take all seven. <laughs> of course. Because it otherwise would it would just be too easy. Because now we have a problem. Because you're only bringing seven, which means we need one more lumber point to finish. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm actually disappointed by that. <laughs> <laughs> Because yeah. I would have detached my trailer and saved saved us a few points if I'd have known that. So, although you're well, saying, you know, what, what what you just said there, bear in mind that it it sometimes the developers and the publishers don't want to listen to feedback, even though it's early access. Oh yeah, absolutely. But that's what I'm saying. It's it's really it's a give and take. Both sides have to be reasonable. I think. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm fairly sure that guy was giving positive feedback as well, like constructive feedback. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I know that there, there are companies. I mean, I had companies too. I had companies sent me, I'm not saying the game, obviously, but they sent me, uh, they sent me the, 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 the famous press copy and, oh yeah, no, just give us honest feedback. And I gave honest yeah. feedback and uh, they did not like that honest feedback too much. And it, I, I, I thought it was very respectful in my opinion but they didn't agree yeah honest feedback uh-huh uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a slippery slope we feedback. like any kind of feedback as long as we agree with it yeah exactly. as as long as it's honestly good 
uh, how great the product is. Yeah, no. It's not how it works. I, <coughs> I'll be honest, there were times that I got uh, invited to, to have a press code where I said flat out, I said, okay, I watched this and honestly, I, I, I take a pass on this one. I'm not, no. Because I don't know how to make this look any way, shape or form presentable. Yep. I say I, people don't, the, the, the thing is people don't see what you don't do. They only see what you do do. Mm -hmm. So that so people don't see the decisions that you're making to say no to games, to say no to offers, um, whatever the, whatever they are. Because obviously you get offers of people sending you keys, people will send you um, like sponsorship deals, people will send you all, all kinds of stuff. And, you, mm -hmm. and I say no to like 90% of the stuff because it, you know, isn't right for the channel, isn't right for me, isn't right for my community. Mm -hmm. um, whatever it is and, but people don't see that they don't see the things that you don't do they only see the things that you do do yeah, that's, that's so it is with games like you like you say people send you your keys and you just go no i can't i either can't make that work i don't enjoy it or i actually think it's rubbish <laughs> yeah exactly but in that regards i have to say it's really refreshing to talk to somebody who is who i mean our channels are very much alike besides the fact that you are six times the size but we i think our com like in in general what we do is very much alike and it's very refreshing to talk to somebody who actually lives that every day too right where, where you have actually d these decisions to make now obviously you make them on a much bigger scale but it's in the end it's the same i had that too where people approach me oh well especially when i was active still with with gta a little bit there were a lot of times where people approach you hey I give you uh, $400 if you make this video and you just have to push this app or th this product of mine and you look at the app and they're like, it's a pyramid scheme. Yeah. Wow, but you get 600 How much money do I have to pay you to, to make that video? I said, no, that's, that's not... Take your money and <laughs> go somebody else. Go to yeah. somebody else, not to me. I'm no interest whatsoever. But there are many people who, who do. Oh yeah, money. absolutely. Well, he showed me too. He's like, "Oh yeah, here, you you don't even have to make the video. I just uh, I'll uh, I give you the video, and you just have to make a voiceover." I said, "No." Yeah, right. No, no. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. No. <clears throat> and then he's oh, well. Here, this video is uh, is an example, and I click on the link, <laughs> and I just get from YouTube. Oh. Uh, uh, this video was taken down, blah blah blah. I'm like, oh yeah, right on. Yeah, that yeah. Makes me feel really good about your product, buddy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't think so. There's a, there's more there's more than one person trying to make a quick buck out of that. Oh yeah. But well, I mean, I've been I've been contacted like that from people um, wanting me to make videos selling their app or product or whatever, and they send you example video links and you click on them, and you, you know now that this was a sponsored video, right? Yeah. But yeah. when you go to the video, there's no declaration of sponsorship in the title. There's no mention of sponsorship from the uh, the person saying it. And in the video description, somewhere down the bottom, there might be something like, thanks to blah, blah, blah for providing this product. Mm -hmm. Like, this is breaking F, you know, FCC laws about advertising right here. You're not declaring it. And... The guy who's you know trying to get me to do this as well is breaking the law by not pushing those creators to do it mm -hmm. it's just i don't want to work with people like that no i'm 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 with you on that one oh, you gotta be kidding me i did not really do that just now oh yeah of course i did <sighs> okay turn around bring the logs to the mill that actually needs it Yeah, I know. It's 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 yeah, amazing. It's the, far, the far lumber mill. I've already done one. <laughs> <clears throat> it's really it's it's almost brazen of those people how they really. Well, hey, they are. <clears throat> they don't let they they don't take no for an answer either. Though initially, like I, I had some people approaching me over and over and over. And I'm like, dude, get a hint, go away. 
I have no interest of aligning with you or your business or your your product. It, <laughs> they can't understand when they come up against people with with principles and you know a certain amount of morality because they don't have any so they can't understand why you don't want to do this yeah oh well you can get uh then he, <clears throat> you know and and the amount of money that they throw pretty much in your face it makes you wonder how much they make out of this because well it's a business so they have to make profit and if they can throw essentially hundreds of dollars just well, make this video. No, I don't want to. Well, get a $500 bonus here. I said, no, I don't want to. That makes you wonder how much money those people make. Yep. They must be able to get a return on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, almost a little bit scary if you think about it. As you pointed out, there's channels that just take it and run with it. It just said the Northern Alex has unlocked the B66 for me. Uh huh. Did you unlock the garage or something? No, I just unlocked the vehicle when I drove past it. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you drop those seven points off, we only need to get one point. Um, I've got the truck minus the trailer now to go and get. Well, honestly, I would drop the trailer if I were you. Just a few points. I No, I already did. I'm just going getting the few points that we need to finish the lumber mill. So when you've dropped them off, um, if you wanted to, you could try moving garage points or... Mm-hmm. Oh, I will totally do that. I don't think I'll need fuel, but if I can make it back to the fuel truck, I should be okay. <laughs> I had somebody saying on, on one of the first videos that we published, I didn't even know when you guys gonna see this because Yeah, it's the fourth fourth part. Yeah, it looks mm -hmm. like we can we can probably finish it in five. Yeah. Um But I had somebody say, Oh, you guys should make a podcast. It's so entertaining to listen to you. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, I've no. never done a podcast. Me either. That would have been a first. I've also seen like there's um, people like H3, H3, you do podcasts, but they tend to do them with a video now, so it's like a, a vidcast, I guess you would call it. Mm -hmm. It's structured like a podcast, except there's cameras there. Let me put it that way. Now, without the trailer, this thing is burning 15, 16 liters. So it really doesn't matter if you drag the trailer <laughs> or not. It doesn't make that much difference. Well, I guess 10 liters. 10 liters are 10 or liters. But when you turn off the all-wheel drive, it saves an awful lot of fuel. Yeah, definitely. Ta -ta. Okay, right. I've arrived at the kiosk. Are you kidding me? funny when you drive past those old well I guess they are farms maybe buildings anyway makes you wonder what they are doing out here <laughs> yeah oh my god I managed to get one log on each grab Oh, 
Oh my. I have 23 liters left. I'm 20 meters away and I'm burning 15 liters per minute. This is gonna come <laughs> down to the wire. You can do it, I have faith. Yes, delivering now. One more lock in position. Now the Lanx has delivered seven load. Yes. I guess you made it. Yeehaw. I did so. Now, let me let me think here. What am I gonna do? So the K700 is here. Oh, are you kidding? Utility trailer is here. Just bugging out a little bit. <laughs> the, the log. Yeah, that is it. Yeah, I had the logs in the back, but it was um, it, it wasn't. It was refusing to see them as logs. It was going, oh, you need one more log, and there was like five, six logs in the back. Oh, Just oh, had to um. Knock them around. Sometimes I noticed the. Well, I don't. You probably know that, but when the the points on those logs are not green, they won't they won't register. Yeah, that was the problem, but. They were in the back, I just had to keep shuffling stuff until it they went green. Until it that yeah. Okay. Now to find out if I've got enough fuel to get back. How are you getting on? Oh, I just grabbed the uh, K700 so I can do another fuel run to my E-Class. Because it has four garage points attached to it still, so... We'll see how that all works out. So far, well, so thing, good. This thing moves. Can I take that back? <laughs> I was about to say this thing moves a lot better without a trailer, and then immediately got stuck on a rock. <laughs> oh come on! I don't know if you ever tried to finish the, f the map, the flood, but boy, oh boy, oh boy, that's one of the old maps. Yeah, I remember the flood. <laughs> Awful lot of water. You got to pick your pick your routes very carefully. Yup. Even when you turn the lights on on this thing, you, you get this like clunk clunk, and then this kind of yellowy light comes out. It's just mm -hmm. so authentic. Yeah, the relays engaging and. Yeah, exactly. Just little details like that. Yeah. You know what? As, as silly as that sounds, but that was one of the things that I noticed the first time I played Omzi is the fact that the halogen. Um, lights the bulbs or the, the filament bulbs actually have this little bit of afterglow as soon as they go off they they don't digitally go one and zero they actually have a little bit of a fade to them and i thought yeah, that was it, very refreshing as it cools down mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I like stuff like that. Yeah. But those little details, some people just completely lost on them. I remember um, when I reviewed, oh, what was it? Banished. I oh made, yeah, I've not I, played that for ages. I, I made a comment about how satisfying those buttons sound when you click them. And people <laughs> were like, you know, I, I never realized that, but after you mentioning that, yeah, they do. Well, for me, it was always the window on an OMC bus. The squeaky window. Oh, when, yes. When, I always had a thing for the squeaky window. The first thing I do when I get in a new bus in Omsi is test the window. Yeah, if you have the, the brand new buses, all you hear is bzzz. Yeah, it's just not the same. No. The old ones that had the window, like the glass was against them, like like kind of bristly bits, and you get mm -hmm. this kind of shh, shh kind of noise as you drag the window. I know. And then you slam it shut and you get thunk. <laughs> Love Yes. That. Okay, so I'm at the fuel station. I'm gonna go through the block post and gonna go to the other garage, gonna grab a trailer, come back, fuel up, fuel the E up, and deliver the points, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe. What points? The garage points. Right, cool. That's the plan. Well, plans were never very good in practice. No. I'm crossing the water bit at the moment. Well, in the army we have the saying that the best laid out plans don't survive the first contact with the enemy. That was Sun Tzu, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Sun Tzu's art of war. I'd say there was, there was something like all the plans that you make will be completely invalidated within the first you know, a few few minutes of combat, but it's very important that you make the plans. <laughs> Almost definitely. Always have a plan B, though. That's what I learned. Oh, yeah. Oh, this thing is actually moving nicely now, even without all wheel. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Yeah, I said that, and look what happened to me. Stuck in a rock. Block post is open. Trucks with no lumber are allowed to pass. Yay. Oh, uh, speaking of block post is open, have you seen this the, the trailer for this uh, Border Patrol game? Border Patrol? Uh, yes, you, you are... Uh, Oh no, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> See, you said I'm making good progress and that, the next thing that happens? Yeah. Oh, fuck down. I got a free again, but... Um, basically, you are a border patrol officer in a clearly oh, Russian... Yeah. Or, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say Russian, but East Eastern Europe country. Looks like it anyway. And, yeah. You just control the truck and <laughs> extort the driver and <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff. Is it just me or is it a crazy amount of all kinds of simulators is coming out lately? Good ones yeah. as well as, um, well... <laughs> hmm. they, I, I think, it, I don't know, that some of the developers think it's just an easy quick win. So mm. they make these kind of you know, averagey simulator games. But then I noticed they've also, a lot of them don't put the word simulator in there now. Like, yeah. for example, Demolish and Build. Yeah, it's They true. don't put the word sim in there. They just put Demolish and Build 2018. Well, because if they would have put simulator somewhere, you could have called them out on it. But... Yep. Tell you what, making without that trailer, I'm making a lot better progress. Oh, I believe it. It's crazy. Yep, 
Yeah, I don't know, and it's 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 funny because uh, the longer you look at this whole this whole industry, quote unquote, the more you can kind of tell by depending on who who's uh, who's publishing and whatnot, you kind of can tell that yeah, it's gonna be really good or it's gonna be meh. Yeah. You were saying before about um, early access games and what I thought about them. Mm -hmm. I would have the same question for you over kickstarting games. As being one that got suckered into quite a few. <laughs> Just games or Kickstarter in, in general? Just games, not, not kickstarting you know, products, just kickstarting games. Uh... Because kickstarting, if you like, is an alternative to early access. Yeah. So which, which do you prefer and why? Well, hmm, which do I prefer? I think by now early access, just because. Well, Kickstarter, I've seen it now a few times where there were successful funded games that were absolutely grossly overfunded where you're like, um, I, I, what are you guys doing? Like two, four, five, six hundred percent overfunded sometimes. And it never comes to pass. And... If, especially if you have a significant amount of money invested. I mean, it's your own own fault, obviously, but it kind of hurts more with, with early exit, at least. It's not as much money, but... I also find that with early access, you have a more direct way to contact uh, the developers. Partially. Yeah, I mean, in the same way I've seen people abuse Kickstarter. In the same way they abuse early access. Yeah, I mean, there will always be abuse. I... I don't know, I, I just... Out of experience? Early access was a less negative experience than what I had with Kickstarter games. The thing that I like about Kickstarter is... Most of the times you have in the really indie studios that have no affiliation with any kind of publisher and they really they they, they are kind of in in terms of that they can be more of a free spirit if you will hmm. i think i mean yeah w when a publisher gets involved the developer's arms get tied quite a bit sometimes yeah So I guess it has pros and cons, definitely. Which one do you prefer? Which one do I prefer? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to... I mean, I think... Of the early access games that I've backed... Um, the Kickstarter one, sorry. I think most of them have come to fruition. But from the early access stuff that I've backed on Steam or rather bought into the early access. There's still a number that have... I mean, like The Forest, for example, has been going on for four, I mean, nearly five years, although I think they're releasing this year. Yeah. Um, but largely the Kickstarter of ones have, have delivered. Um, I just don't like it when I see abuse of the, of the system. When I see people... When I see certain publishers... Um, and I won't name names, but they're well-known ones. And they put a product on Kickstarter that they already have the money to develop. Mm -hmm. they, they've got the money, they've got the development team, they've built previous games, but they are kickstarting a game. It's not really kickstarting at all. It's, it, it's a way of getting money for something they've not yet finished building, but they're going, they, they say in the statement, this game is under development and is going to be finished. 
yeah. this year. Um, well, why are you kickstarting it then? <laughs> you know, why are you kickstarting this game? I consider that to be abuse of the of the. Um, the well, reason that Kickstarter was invented, if you like. I, I was about to say, it, it kind of goes against the whole idea of why there's Kickstarter. Yeah. To, to connect people who've got an idea and want to build something with people who are prepared to take the gamble and give them the money to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, here you, here you have a publisher who already has the money to do it, is already the active developing it, and they just want to get free sales before they release <laughs> Don't yeah. like that. But largely, Kickstarter's done. You know, I, I think it's done. I've had a good experience with it. Yeah, I like backing games early. You know, I like it when they yeah. deliver. It's good to see success story, but you don't. It doesn't always happen. Well, I mean, it's. You know, in, in a way, it's almost. Sometimes it's a gamble, and. and Sometimes it's it's almost <laughs> in in a way, in a very small way, obviously, but almost like the stock market. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. It's just you kind of have to hedge your bet. And you know what? Honestly, sometimes you can tell by the presentation of the idea and the product whether or not there is any kind of merit to it. True. And if you're not sure, you can always. You can always wait mm -hmm. and see how it turns out. But I mean, my Steam library's got games in it that, you know, I've bought in early access or backed on Kickstarter. And have I got my money's worth out of it? Nope. <laughs> no, and that's just the gamble that you take sometimes. I mean, I have that too. Okay, I have the truck at the lumber mill. Yeah, as soon as you deliver, this is over. Exactly, so... Uh, let's see where you are on the... What have you got in the back of that thing? Fuel. Well, I'm gonna have fuel in it once I'm on my way back. So I could unload one garage point into the... <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was one. I need another seven. Depends if you bothered about finishing the garage. Yeah, that's why I'm doing this whole exercise here of bringing the K700 with a fuel, with another fuel trailer down to the fuel point. Because my uh, E with the four garage points is sitting without fuel. In fact, I am just coming past it here now. Even this truck here only carries three. I love the sound of the turbo when it spools up, especially on the K700. Yeah, I got a question for you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> do you find yourself watching a lot of different YouTubers, um, especially gaming, or is it, well, you living it daily, it's, it's kind of getting to the point where you just don't want to see anything anymore. But especially when it comes to new releases, or, well, I guess a lot of the stuff we get early anyway, so we don't really have the chance to watch other YouTubers, but yeah, in general, I, do you watch them or? I personally don't tend to watch um, much gaming YouTube channels. I tend to watch streams, if anything, like gaming mm -hmm. streams. That's just what, I don't know, I don't exactly, I can't really explain that, <laughs> but I like hanging out in streams and watching other streamers play games. Mm -hmm. um, but on YouTube, I tend to watch more documentary stuff. Like, you know, the last few days I've been watching uh, various 
TV series about flying, like Above the Skies of Britain, and one about the RAF, that which was a four-part thing, like proper BBC production, mm -hmm. which somebody kindly uploaded to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I tend to watch that kind of stuff on YouTube, um, but I tend to consume my gaming via streams. And I think that's just, I, I can't explain why that is. Because I, I really, I really can't explain, I don't know. It's just, maybe it's habitual, just the way I've done, just the way I do things. Um, but I do watch, I do watch YouTube gaming. Um, like, like you say, if, if uh, a new plane has come out on DCS, I'll go and watch a couple of videos on it. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. With people that actually know what they're doing 100%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how you see that, but for me, streaming, because everybody's always like, well, what do you like better, streaming or videos? And I, uh, I personally like both. <laughs> Yeah, it, it it it's just it's very different from each other. It, it like especially videos alone. I find sometimes if you don't have necessarily a lot to say, then it gets very challenging to make a twenty-minute video without all of a sudden falling silent. I think that's the, the, the problem when people. It's like anything. When you see something done well, it looks easy. So if you watch a YouTuber who does it really well, he will make it look easy. And the temptation then is to think that it's not difficult at all and I could do it and yeah. um, you're just playing games and you should go and get a real job and all that kind of thing that comes <laughs> with it. Yeah. You know, we've, we've all experienced that one. Um, but at the same time, when people do try it for themselves, they find out that it really isn't that easy. And like you say, you can easily run out of stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. And that's just one aspect to it. Never mind the production quality of the whole thing. Um, and making it entertaining and deciding what games to play next and what content to make. Even when you're recording, you've then got to decide what you're going to talk about. On Twitch, it's, it, or streaming, any streaming platform, not just Twitch, it's different because... Um, you can interact you're basically interacting with your audience and that makes life a bit easier in that sense oh yeah absolutely i couldn't but agree it's more. still interesting that i've seen streamers who who hardly interact with their with their viewers and i've seen streamers who hardly say anything which i find i find that whole concept interesting because the whole purpose of the platform is to interact with your audience mm -hmm. i know you know what this, this is for me one of the the main points for me of streaming is the interaction with the community that's i mean that's what it's all about really it's interesting but yeah i've seen that too completely i mean some I games it's hard to and i understand that it's hard to to keep up with the chat and whatnot because you have to pay very close attention to what's happening in the game but there are certain yeah, certain games that are perfect for streams. If you're, if you're those people who like to do racing, for example, it's very hard to read chat and race. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially if you suck at racing to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a whole different story. Speaking of whole different story, my timer tells me 49 minutes. Yeah, I think I am, where am I? I am just around the corner from delivering some garage points. Um, I'm on my way back won't. with the fuel right now too. So I, in theory, I think we can do it in 10, 15. So I don't know. Um, I think I've got four points here. I've delivered once. So that's five. We need three more. Yeah, I have four on the trailer that I'm about to fuel up. Okay, so you drop that off, we unload the logs and map done. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. 
can always cut it down if you want. Yeah, it just doesn't really matter to me. We could even cut, if, if this one is an hour long, we could even cut it in between. Make a transition like that, if you wanted to or whatever. I mean. Yeah, I'm very close to the garage now. And the sun is coming up. Yes. So nice. garage now the container full of stuff oh, another four wonderful yeah, I'm just making my way up here the beaten path literally the beaten path because by now it's so beaten up that it's getting kind of difficult to get through. I can believe it. Oh, isn't it fun? But yeah, I think I, if, if I learned one thing with YouTubing as well as with streaming is for the most part anyway, I mean, of course, there is there is uh, sometimes uh, yeah, you have different experiences for different people, no doubt about that, but, uh, oh, what now? It's more of a marathon and not really a sprint. No, I said, you a long, I said to you a long time ago, you need to be in it for a long game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you said that on our initial email, you told me that for the first time. And you told me that a few times since. <laughs> <laughs> And it's as true now as it ever was. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, most definitely, I mean. But it's kind of, it's just something that I feel people really don't talk about for whatever reason. It's, uh, yeah, that it's, it's, it is not a sprint. And what looks easy when you see the video there's a lot of work behind it, and people tend to forget that. How far are you away from dropping the garage points off? <laughs> uh, I'm about two minutes from, uh, well, uh, let's say three minutes from fueling up the E-Class, and the E-Class is about two minutes from the garage, so let's say five minutes. Okay. I say that very confidently in the hopes that I don't get stuck anymore. <laughs> it's too, I find, with, well, especially with Twitch, I guess, uh, you know, auto hosts are a really nice thing. They are great and everything. And give you sometimes, depending on who hosts you, a nice little boost like now I, I don't know it's it's easier for me to talk about it now that the twitch partnership program is completely trans transparent not like it was when i looked in it for the first time and when you initially became a partner it was this ominous thing of well nobody really knows what the requirements are we have all a rough idea but well, i said when did it become transparent Oh, they have now, it's, you have to have, um, when they introduced achievements and the affiliation program, that's why I told you the other day, I'm at 88%, well, 89% now. Um, it's kind of a, uh, almost Steam achievements. Um, you have to have so and so many hours per month, you have to have so and so many 
uh, individual streams and you have to have that's what I'm working right now on is you have to have an average of 75 uh, 75 viewers over 30 days <laughs> it sounds like that's not much but oh my goodness man it is for well, when, when I applied I was getting three to four hundred viewers per stream and being turned down for partnership uh, well I guess they changed a little bit oh that's changed a lot <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah. It, and and you can see it now. You get your stream summary, and it shows on there. It shows you are so and so many percent there. That's what I was saying. I'm eighty eight percent now there, but the, the seventy five on average is uh, it's a thing. <laughs> I'm certain that I get there, but it's gonna be yeah. a moment yet. Okay, I got my class E fueled up and I'm rolling. Well, I would be rolling if I wasn't spinning. <laughs> there we go. You're on your way to the garage now then? Yeah. So those block posts in this game completely change the map, don't they? Mm -hmm. In the early days of spin ties, they never existed. Ever since they brought them in, like wherever they put a block post, it can completely change the nature of the map. Oh yeah. They can. You you think? Oh, it's just a two-minute drive up until you come up to the block post, and yeah, no. Left or right, buddy. It's a nice addition. Oh, look at that. Rolling up to the garage here with my last points. Yep, I see you. The monster truck. Yes, monster truck, that one. And done. And I just got repaired. <laughs> Instantly got repaired when you did that. <laughs> right, do you want me to unload these points into here then? No, might as well. That's gonna end it. That's gonna end it. That's all. Game Many finished, five hours and 18 minutes. Wow, look at this. Many thanks too. <laughs> <laughs> Many thanks to Squirrel the Northern Alex. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Completed with Game Balance Hardcore. There you go. And we traveled 16 point... Uh, I traveled 16.4 kilometers. Or is it I, a total? I did 23.3, .3, so... Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I, I had 16.4 uh, kilometers in 4 hours, 52 minutes. Fuel Fantastic. Fuel consumed 3,900 liters. How many? I didn't even did 27. <laughs> 3948. Trucks are wow, five, five. Yeah. Almost four tons of fuel. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> well, GG, sir. We're just coming up under the hour, so that's perfect. Yeah, perfect. It was fun. All right. Well, I guess we can just ask people to um, drop the comments in chat um, what they thought about the whole thing, our playthrough, and if there's any particular maps or vehicles I think we should look at. Exactly. Yeah, looking forward to the next time. Thank you, everybody, for yeah. watching. GG, sir.